morning class. Today we're going to go over uh, experimental design. I just kind of wanted to uh, take you guys through uh, the presentation on experimental design uh, so you can have a, more of a platform with which to uh, you know base your understanding on. Okay, because this is very important. Okay, and uh, experimental design um, basically is how you set an experiment up. Uh, and so um, basically doing ex experimentation is um, basically comprises the means in which you answer a problem or solve a problem. So the first thing you need to do is, you know, uh, formulate like questions that you would answer uh, by doing the experiment. So you want to uh, come up with a question that is uh, testable within the materials that you have at hand. So uh, you need to come up based on your observations, develop a hypothesis, okay? And, you, and a hypothesis is just basically your best thinking about how to, to change, uh, you, uh, about how the change you make might affect another factor, okay? To be able to, um, and it could be anything. It doesn't always have to be an experiment. It could be research to verify uh, a claim that you're making or a hypothesis. Um, Okay, and then you must design the experiment, which is just a test. And you need to have, uh, and the best way to think of it is a trial. Okay, uh, and so you're going to try the experiment a certain number of times to see if you can get a con the constant, um, uh, a, a constant uh, outcome, okay, over and over again. Okay, we covered this the other day, but I kind of wanted to just uh, solidify um, what we're talking about. The independent variables, the variable that's proposedly changed. Uh, the best example is like what, to what degree you sweat when I raise the temperature. The temperature would be the independent variable, you know, me turning it up or down in the, in the room. The amount you sweat is the dependent variable, the changes in response to the independent variable. Okay, I hope everybody understands that. Okay. So basically, the, in, the dependent variable responds to the uh, independent variable. Okay, what are constants in the experiment? So like in the, uh, in the video, they mentioned about testing out to see if the fertilizer was effective. So they had a, what's called, a, you always have a control. So they had one plant that wasn't receiving any fertilizer, but it received the same amount of sunlight and water than the other one. Uh, was the one they were conducting this experiment on, received the, the same amount of sunlight, the same amount of water, but received the fertilizer. And they wanted, that was a way to test based on a control, your control, um, how the independent variable um, on the one being tested uh, changed the outcome. Okay, materials and procedures. Uh, it's important to, um, when you're doing or setting up an experiment, conducting an experiment, uh, you want to list uh, everything, but especially your materials and procedures, because you want another uh, scientist or another person to be able to come by and recreate what you did. So this is very important when a, uh, especially when you're establishing whether something might become, go from a hypothesis to a theory and may, maybe even a law. So the things that uh, uh, that you're seeing as like the law of, of thermodynamics or the law of action and reaction, all these things were uh, experiments were set up that could be tested by anybody. Okay, and they had the materials, procedures, and everything they did, so it could be recreated and verified. Uh, how you vary the independent variable? Um, how many different values for the independent variable should we test? Uh, the more the better, um, uh, you know, because you want to, if you just do it twice, that could be considered like, okay, a fluke or whatever. But if you do it like, you know, five or 10 times, normally about 10 times is a good, uh, is a good trial measure. Okay, repeated trials, the number of times that a value of the uh, independent variable is tested. So if I was doing room temperature, I might you know, uh, change the temperature at intervals. Okay, like 20 degrees, go up 20 degrees each time and see how much you, you sweat, all right, to a certain point. 
drawing of the experiment. Okay, that, that included labels. Uh, you can do this. This is, uh, if you take chemistry, especially in college, this becomes very, it's kind of cool actually to be able to draw you up your experiments because uh, in college you, you have, a there's a lab kind of teacher, but basically you're doing all the stuff on your own. And that's why your, your, your lab notebook is so important. And so it's important to actually go in there and draw all this stuff. Okay, qualitative observations and results. Uh, the, uh, you know, there's qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative, these are what you perceive that occurred during the uh, course of the experiment. This is your opinion, okay, your observation. Quantitative, uh, quantitative is uh, what I call the nitty gritty. It's the, it's the no nonsense, it's just the data, the hard numbers uh, in the form of raw data displayed in data and tapes, okay. Uh, and and w in terms of uh, experimentation and stuff like that, quantitative is where you make the money. I mean, that's where that, that you can prove or disprove what's going on. And it normally um, uh, takes place in a data table, just like this one. Uh, and, um, the, you know, that's kind of where it's at. Okay. Um, uh, the graphs, the effect of the independent variable. Uh, normally, you would have it. Uh, you might have might use uh, the y-axis for one variable and the x-axis for another one. Uh, analysis, interpretation of results. I won't stay on this very much, but this is where you describe in words uh, what is illustrated in your data based on your your table and graph. This is very important. Um, that you analyze and interpret and you have this on display so when somebody comes behind you they might uh they might read ahead and say okay this is what's supposed to happen so when they do the when they do the experiment uh they'll have that to draw from okay what factors in your materials or procedure might have impacted your results those are possible errors and and you have to determine why or not, or why not your results supported uh, or did not support the hypothesis. Uh, the conclusion is very important because it can determine whether you're going to basically be content and end your experimentation because you think it was valid or whether you need to start over. Okay, so this is basically the basic things involved with uh, experimental design. I just kind of want to go through it for you so you can have this as a resource. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.